<clears throat> All right, hey guys. So this is the uh, DJI NASA GPS board phase two. I guess round two actually. I'm gonna see if I got the uh, fail safe working. Um, it was definitely the receiver I was using. Well, hopefully it was the receiver I was using. Didn't actually have a fail safe mode. It was a standard orange six channel I just threw on there. But um, I've got my AR8000 uh, receiver plugged in and I set the, I bound it with the fail safe mode set to, um, to my fail safe switch on my transmitter. But uh, theoretically this should be a working fail safe. Um, I don't have it set up on a switch anymore. I just had it temporarily on my switch. So in order to test the fail safe, I quite literally do have to um, turn my transmitter off. Okay, so I've got a green light, no red lights, which means that it has full walk with all the satellites. Let's turn it on, see how it flies in GPS mode right now. That's GPS lock. About 50% throttle. Gaining altitude. Okay. Seems to work. Now this was roughly my home location. Let's say this is about row 39. And uh, I'm going to bring it over here and turn the power off to see if it goes straight up and then lands back in its original location. So here we go. Okay. Ready? Power off. Lost signal. Hovers. Goes up. Power off. Oh my god, this little tiny thing going that high scares me. <laughs> Moving over. Still heading in the same direction. Oh, I can't see it because of the sun. That's scary. Hovering. At this point it would be giving you like a 10 second hover to try to regain your lock. This thing's moving around a lot. Uh, you know what, I think I got a little toilet bowl effect. Maybe I need to reposition my compass. I'm getting, uh, uh, I don't know though. It's taking its time, I'm still turned off. Well, it sure does take its time. I guess I'd rather have it descend slowly than just power off and gun it at the end. Hey, hey. Okay. I'd say that's within, well... That's 39, so I'd say that's probably within about, I don't know, meter? Yeah, it's pretty good. Turn it back on. And back in GPS lock. Yeah, that's, that's pretty effective, I would say. Now let's uh, really freak myself out and go way out there and do it. Okay, wait, turn back on. There we go. I'm going to throw it out there. Let go of the stick. I just turned off my radio. Hovering, drifting quite a bit. Gaining altitude. <sighs> oh, changing heading this time. Weird. 
wish I could do this without having a sun right in my eyes. So I'm nosing now, that's weird. It didn't, uh, at least I didn't see it. It didn't seem to do that before. There we go. I'll stand right at the 39 mark. Last time it landed, sort of right in this line. Okay, that's its hold. Now it's descending. Oh, this transmitter off. Yeah, nothing. Pretty cool. You can see it's flying a little bit better. I tuned it up a little bit more with the gains. Um, I still haven't set up my extra auxiliary channel so that I can do my gain adjustment on the fly. And it's a nice landing at that. Beautiful. Pretty damn cool. All right, let's actually play around with it now. Yeah, so um, I'll probably set up my gain on my on my transmitter, but I feel like once it's dialed in, for what I'm going to use it for, I don't think it's necessary. But um, I'll set it up either way. Is there like a period of time that it... Oh no, you have to switch it off a of GPS to loosen it up. Okay, so right now this is manual mode. This is how I'm used to flying my KKs. Completely manual. No altitude hold at all. It also scares me a little bit just because of the... Um, just because of the fact that it's got that GPS antenna sticking up. Fun. Pretty playful. A little more dialed in. It moves nice and smooth. And it holds its altitude pretty well now. Well, I would say this is flying as well as my KKs. My KK2 is dialed in in normal mode. I don't think it's flying any better. But about as well. It has a lot of power too. I love it. Yeah, okay. So I'm getting more comfortable with it. Now let's flip it into altitude, hold, and it just turns into this little tame thing. You can't really like lean it into corners anymore, but it is very stable. Gives you all the motion you need, especially for FPV. This setting makes everything, we'll say, sort of numbed. It numbs the controls quite a bit, um, including altitude, so your your throttle is numbed a lot. Right, and boom, GPS lock. Where are you going, buddy? Trying to head back to where I locked it. Okay, so 50% throttle hands off. It's got a little washy effect. That may be the compass. I might want to uh, reconfigure it, recalibrate uh, it. There's this really funky way you calibrate these things. You go in and you take your mode setting switch after you plug in and you flip it six to ten times. And then what you have to do is you have to hold the quad and do a full rotation flat, turn it up, and then do a full rotation 90 degrees off. And I uh, calibrated it with like nothing in my pockets, trying to be as far away from anything metal as possible. But, uh, and you know, I'm actually pretty happy with it because what happens is if it's calibrated or your compass is it's miscalibrated or angled improperly, you'll get what guys call, call the toilet bowl effect, where it'll come down trying to auto land and you'll see it sort of swirl on its way down. 
but um, this doesn't seem to be doing that much. Yeah. All right, well, I'm pretty happy with this actually. It's flying real nice. The real secret is going to be how does it do once it gets on my hex. My FPV hex is going to be is an insanely stable platform to begin with. So I can only imagine how nice it's going to be flying this FPV, this system FPV with the hex. So um, I'll probably get that on there in the next few days, depending on uh, if I'm traveling or not. So thank you for watching, and um, I will see you tomorrow. See you guys.